Hi, welcome to my weekly Torah thought for the Torah portion of Devarim. I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bernath. On this week's podcast, we're going to talk about visions. We're going to talk about journeys and try to kind of connect it to what's going on in the world and in our lives. Helen Keller once wrote an interesting article in the Atlantic Monthly. She said, only the deaf appreciate hearing. Only the blind realize the manifold blessings that lie in sight. Particularly does this observation apply to those who have lost sight and hearing in adult life. But those who have never suffered impairments of sight or hearing seldom make the fullest use of these blessed faculties. Their eyes and ears take in all the sights and sounds hazily without concentration and with little appreciation. It is the same old story of not being grateful for what we have until we lose it, of not being conscious of health until we are ill. I've often thought it would be a blessing if each human being were stricken blind and deaf for a few days at some time during his early adult life. Darkness would make him more appreciative of sight. Silence would teach him the joys of sound. Recently, I was visited by a very good friend who had just returned from a long walk in the woods, and I asked her what she had observed. Nothing in particular, she replied. I might have been incredulous had I not been accustomed to such responses, for long ago I became convinced that the seeing see little. Those were the words of Helen Keller. This Shabbat was given the special name of Shabbat Chazon, the Shabbat of vision. There are so many reasons it has this name. I'm going to give you just two of them. First is the most obvious. The Haftorah begins with the words, the vision of Isaiah. In it, Isaiah reprimands the Jews living in Israel during the times of the first temple and warns them to become better people or God will punish them for their negative behavior. And the second is a little more recent or more Hasidic. Rev. Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev taught that on this Shabbat, the Shabbat preceding Tisha B'Av, each of us sees a vision of the third Bet HaMikdash. Our soul sees and feels this vision of the Holy Temple. Now, I was thinking, how can these two above interpretations coexist? Aren't they opposites? It's funny because uh, this majestic tall tree that you see outside, it begins with a, a withered, rotting seed. What appears to be destruction can in truth be the beginning of incredible growth. Knowing the Torah's ruling that a place of godly worship may never be demolished, we ask of God how he allowed for his temple to be destroyed. It turns out that it's permissible to destroy such a place if the purpose is to rebuild a greater structure than before. This vision of Isaiah that we read in the Haftorah reflects terribly on our people, especially with the knowledge that because we didn't listen to the rebuke of the prophets, our temple was destroyed. The destruction of a temple is the most disastrous event in our history and a truly miserable day to commemorate. At the same time, we know that the temple's destruction is the beginning of incredible growth. God can only destroy the first two in order to help us rebuild an even greater structure with an even greater godly connection present. Demolition is part of the construction process. The history of our people is filled with opposites, with terrible times and incredible growth. Many times, the two come hand in hand. In this world, pain and destruction constantly beg us to create from them beauty and growth. The vision is shown to each and every one of us. It's not reserved for the righteous among us, but something we each have the ability to tap into. If we don't see it, we can be assured that our soul has. You might even feel the drive to be a better person sometime over the Shabbat. Now you'll know why.
The Bardichever Rebbe explains the purpose of this vision with a parable of three garments. He says a father purchases a beautiful garment for his son. The son plays in it and tears it in so many places, and the father buys a second garment. And again, the son is not careful and tears the clothing. The father buys a third beautiful garment for his son, but this time he does not gift it to him. The father shows the garment to his child periodically and reminds the child to behave. And he says, when you behave, this garment will be yours. Our lack of respect for Torah destroyed the first temple. Our lack of love for one another destroyed the second. And now God very much wants us to have a third, the Bardichever Rebbe says. Every year before the anniversary of the temple's destruction, we are shown a vision and reminded to behave, to be the people we are capable of being so that once again we can have a temple. After Napoleon conquered the city of Accra in northern Israel, he walked through the streets of the ancient seaport. Suddenly, his attention was caught by a group of people wailing bitterly. Hmm, he thought. Maybe these people were mourning because of Napoleon's conquest. Napoleon sent agents to investigate. His agents returned and told him that it was a group of Jews who were mourning. Although their mourning was prompted by a conquest, it was not Napoleon's victory that they were lamenting. It was the night of Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of the Hebrew month of Av. They were mourning the conquest of Jerusalem and the destruction of the Holy Temple that had taken place more than 1,750 years previously. Napoleon was moved. He exclaimed that any nation whose sense of history is so strong as to remember and remember to the point of actual tears what took place those many years previously will live to see that history become present again. So today I ask you, do you have a personal vision? A vision for any part of your life, any part of your business, your school, your family life, a global vision, a personal vision, your thoughts have the ability to affect a future reality. Knowing where you want to go is the key to getting there. And this Shabbat, this Shabbat is unique because this Shabbat is actually Tisha B'Av. It's actually the ninth of Av. But we're not allowed to mourn. It's the saddest day of the Jewish calendar. And we're not even allowed to experience that sadness. The Rebbe says, because of that, we have to make sure that this Tisha B'Av, this Shabbat, we're more joyous than any other day of the year, maybe than any other day of our life, because when it falls on Shabbat, it's a sign of the future. It's the sign that Napoleon was talking about, that very soon we will be able to merit the new temple, be able to be back in Israel that we love so dearly, together with a new profound peace, a new incredible world, a world without hunger, a world without strife, a world, as the prophets say, where the, the swords will be turned into plowshares and the lion will lie with the lamb. May that be very soon. May that be this Tisha B'Av. I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bernath. Shabbat Shalom. Hi there. I just wanted to let you know that I just launched a brand new website. It's theloverabbi.com, T-H-E-L-O-V-E, R-A-B-B-I dot com, theloverabbi.com, and it has um, lots of very interesting uh, things there, especially you can purchase um, a lot of the different classes and uh, lectures that I have given um, over the past few years, and you can also take a look at the current classes and lectures that I'm giving and the current events that I am doing on relationships. So I encourage you to go check it out. It's theloverabbi.com. Thanks so much.